Arctic Cat is doing a good job of keeping up with the changing economy, shifting their focus from ATVs that people dream of like the $12,299 1000 LTD to ones that consumers can afford, like their new 2011 350, 425, and XC450i Sport 4x4. Along with adding more affordable machines to their line, Arcticat has taken some bold steps to increase the size of their dealer network. A while back, they started partnering with Bass Pro Shops. Known for selling all types of outdoor hunting and adventure equipment, taking on a line of ATVs was a perfect move for them, and put the Arcticat brand in front of many more prospective customers who may not otherwise walk into an ATV dealership. Unlike big box hardware stores, which will sell you a lawnmower but won't work on it, Bass Pro Shops features a service center to take care of customers when their ATVs need attention. Arctic Cats 366 and new 350, 425, and XC450 are all produced through a cooperative part sharing and manufacturing agreement between Arctic Cat and Kimco. Where the 366 was concerned, the relationship yielded an affordable, reliable, and decent running platform, so why not build on it? All three of Arctic Cat's new models are based on the 366 which we finished a long-term test on last year. All of these machines feature dually-arm front suspensions with lower A-arms and tough-looking upper control arms in the rear. Preload adjustable shocks control 7 inches of travel at both ends. However, the XC features different shocks set up specifically for its sportier intentions. Arcticat decided to leave just a little bit of work capability in the XC, as it, along with the other two machines, feature a full-size 2-inch receiver and are rated at 1,050 pounds of towing. Looking closer at the utility machines, the 350 and 425 both received new styling for 2011. Arcticat moved the digital displays from the bodywork in front of the handlebars to the top of the handlebar cover. The already broad and comfortable seats received a softer foam this year as well. The 350 and 425 feature hydraulic disc brakes front and rear. The left side mounted hand lever operates the front and rear brakes together while the right side mounted foot pedal operates the rear brake independently. Sharing the same chassis, both machines have mainly identical dimensions. They are both 44.5 inches wide with wheel bases of 48 inches. Both machines can haul up to 75 pounds on their front racks with 150 pounds on the rear, in addition to their before mentioned 1,050 pounds of towing capacity. The engine and drivetrain are where these two machines differ. The 350 is actually powered by the carburetor-fed, air-cooled, four-valve, single-overhead cam four-stroke engine that powers the 366, giving you 16 extra cc's for your money. All-wheel drive replaces the 366's original two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive setup. The full-time four-wheel drive system features a limited slip front differential to help keep steering effort manageable. Its air-cooled engine and simplified drive system have the 350 weighing in at 588 pounds dry. The 425 trades in the 350's smaller air-cooled engine for Arctic Cat's water-cooled 450H1 power plant. The 443cc fuel-injected engine features four valves and a single overhead cam. This engine can also be found in Arctic Cat's full-size chassis 450, where it's received praise in the past from other publications for producing an impressive amount of usable power for its size. Now residing in a mid-size chassis with a 72-pound lighter dry weight, the engine has around 11.5% less mass to push around. Water cooling and fuel injection add just a bit of weight to the 425, which weighs a claimed 613 pounds. Last year, we tested Kimco's Maxer 375 and were pretty pleased with what it had to offer, although the ATV felt like it could withstand a bit more horsepower. When Arctic Cat rebranded the Maxer into the XC, they ditched the 366cc air-cooled engine and installed their 450H1 bringing fuel injection plus a good amount of additional power to the table. The extra performance is transferred to the ground by the same two-wheel and four-wheel drive system found on the 425. Besides its aggressive body styling, the XC450i separates itself from the 350 and 425 with its flashy aluminum wheels and low-profile Maxxis tires. The wheels feature a slightly different offset adding to the machine's width of 47.5 compared to the 350 and 425's 44.5-inch width. Its suspension has been firmed up compared to its utility siblings, and the 450 is the only one of the three with a rear sway bar. The front and rear brakes are operated independently by right and left side mounted handlebar levers. The rear brake can also be operated independently by a right side mounted foot pedal. 
to unveil their three newest models, Arctic Cat invited us out to their press intro, which was held in Texas at the Rocky Ridge ATV Park. The area offers plenty of tight, challenging rocky sections, along with lots of high-speed trails. We rode around all day switching among the three machines, giving us a pretty good idea of what they have to offer. Riding the 350 is nearly an identical experience to riding the 366, which we did a long-term test on last year. The engine's power comes on right off idle and produces a good amount of torque for its displacement. This gets the machine rolling quickly and allows you to navigate technical sections and steep climbs more easily. The trade-off is that the engine's power signs off earlier and doesn't build RPMs especially fast. Thanks to the transmission's high and low ranges, it feels like a capable worker and decent trail explorer. The 350's handling is happiest when being cruised around or picking its way through a nasty rock section. Steering effort on the 350 seemed reasonable for a full-time four-wheel drive machine, thanks to its limited slip front differential. We did notice some steering feedback and uneven bumps, but nothing unmanageable. Although having no sway bar gives the little cat a fair amount of body roll, it's still relatively stable through the turns, unless you start riding it like a sport quad. If there is available traction, pushing it hard will result in some two-wheeling instead of a power slide, thanks to its all-wheel drive and smaller displacement engine. On side hills and crawling its way through extremely uneven terrain, the 350 feels sure-footed and stable. Being easy to move around on greatly enhances your control in difficult terrain. Suspension settings are pretty well in line with the rest of the machine, working best in technical situations. Picking your way through rocks and uneven bumps, the shocks do a good job of absorbing uneven slow speed impacts. This is greatly due in part to the machine's lack of a rear sway bar. As your speeds increase, the shocks continue to do a decent job of dealing with the trail. They can happily absorb a few feet of air, but feel a bit harsh on whooped out sections or square edged holes. Braking performance on the 350 is decent, but we wish that the lever had a more positive feel to it. Being able to operate the rear brake independently is a plus, and the engine braking system is a big benefit, still not found on all automatic 4x4 ATVs. Obviously, riding the 425 is almost identical to riding the 350. However, there are a few significant differences. First of all, the 425's fuel-injected engine produces significantly more thrust from a dead stop on. It builds RPMs faster and feels more responsive at all speeds when the throttle is cracked. The extra power is a benefit no matter your intentions, and it makes the 425 more entertaining to ride. The extra performance of the 425's engine puts power slides within reach. Being able to break the rear wheels loose before the machine two wheels enhances its sporting appeal. While it weighs 25 pounds more than the 350, the extra power makes the 425 feel more nimble. Having the ability to switch the 425 in and out of four-wheel drive on command is a great benefit we wish Arctic had left on the 350. However, with its sportier engine performance, a lack of two-wheel drive would have been a bigger detriment to the 425. Arcticat switched out the 366's tires for a new set of Kendas, which offered better directional control and improved traction in all conditions on both machines. Both the 350 and 425 are pretty comfortable and quite spacious for mid-sized machines. Based on our experience with the 366, we would expect both of them to hold up. The fuel-injected 425 is $300 less expensive than Yamaha's carbureted Grizzly 350. Although, to the Yamaha's credit, it does feature a locking front differential. Both the Arctic Cat 350 and 425 are good values, but for only $500 more than the 350, our money's on the 425. Look out, Yamaha Wolverine! Arctic Cat's 450H1 engine gives the XC450i the extra horsepower that Kimco's Maxer 375 has been needing. The extra power is available throughout the RPM range. Combined with far superior throttle response, the XC450 is a lot of fun to ride and is notably more entertaining on fast, wide-open trails. Arctic Cat wisely retain both high and low ranges in the transmission. Some Sport 4x4s feature only high range. We like the good low speed and work capabilities provided by having the low range option. Steering effort on the 450i felt comparable to the narrower 425, but we noticed a bit more bump feedback. Arctic Cat and Kimco should be able to remedy this somewhat without the expense of adding power steering. 
The rear sway bar greatly reduces body roll, allowing it to perform much like a solid axle machine through aggressive high-speed turns. The 450i is extremely sure-footed on steep climbs, descents, and on side hills, boosting rider confidence. Its stable, predictable feeling is due in part to its low-profile Maxxis tires, which work well in year-round trail conditions, but will leave you looking for four-wheel drive often during the wet months. The XC's sport tuned suspension provides a firm yet forgiving ride over small trail obstacles, and will stand up to a few feet of air without complaint. However, on small square-edged bumps, the front shocks can feel a bit harsh. We felt the rear shocks performed a bit better overall, providing a slightly more forgiving ride. The extra ground clearance provided by the IRS is a big benefit not enjoyed by some of the CAT's competitors. We beat up the Kimco with no major issues and would expect the Arctic Cat to last a long time. The XC450i is the only fuel-injected single-cylinder Sport 4x4 on the market. It's also the only Sport 4x4 with IRS, besides the $8,049 Can-Am Renegade 500 and $9,899 Renegade 800. Those extra features come at a price, though, as the Arctic Cat costs $300 more than the Yamaha Wolverine 450 or Polaris Scrambler 500. The features you get for the money, though, make the XC450i a good buy. Arctic Cat is clearly paying attention to the market, and they have responded with three great new choices to meet the demands of today's ATVing enthusiast. For more information on Arctic Cat ATVs, log on to arcticcat.com.